Pitches out to Preventer, he's going to go wide to the left, around the corner, touchdown Eisenhower! Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Eisenhower Eagle Football Review. I'm Tim Meyer with Coach Chris Smith, and tonight, Coach, you guys defeated the Roseville Panthers 42 to nothing, uh, including a running clock. You got a few players in tonight, but you had a great performance from Max Whitwer and Jack Morris. Right, I, but, you know, this is a whole team performance this week. Uh, you know, we had two tough games the last two games, real tough games, and Jack and, and Max, they've both been playing great the first two games, so it was no surprise on that. Well, Jack had three touchdowns. I asked him earlier, I said, I bet you, that, you know, he had one passing, one running, and uh, one receiving, but he's most proud of the one that he threw. Oh, yeah, I, I'm sure he's pretty happy about that touchdown pass. You know, he's been running as our backup quarterback all year, and, uh, you know, we were lucky to get him a chance to get in there and get some snaps. And, and you know, playing a team like Roseville, how do you get the guys pumped up to play a team like Roseville? Look, they're in a, they're in a lower division. Uh, they were 2-0, and but, but still uh, – Last year you waxed them pretty good, 49 to nothing. And how do you get them up for that? Well, you know, you, you, we approach every game the same way. It doesn't matter if we're playing, uh, you know, the, a, a top team in the state or uh, a team that's, you know, in, a, in the MAC Blue. They're they're all opponents that can beat you, and so you got to prepare the same way. Um, you know, as far as getting up for a game, that's up to the kids. You know, mentally you just try to prepare them to play in the game like it's any other game. And hopefully they come out there and, and they play, you know, like they do in, in, in every game. So, you know, it's not an easy thing to do. Um, but, uh, you know, I thought the kids met, were mentally ready to play today. And speaking of kids, I mean, you got fans in the stands, the, the student body, and, and the band was on tonight too. I mean, they had a great halftime performance. I know you didn't see it, but but they're, they're really good. They're really sharp. Well, I think we got the greatest band around. Uh, there's no question about it. Our dance team, you know, national champions, our cheerleaders are great. So, and our fans, I don't think there's a, you can have better fans in student section than, than we have. It's been like that the past couple of years, and uh, uh, these guys were great today. I mean, they, I, they took up half of our stands. I saw that again today, you know, so um, it's great. It's good for the, the players. It's good for the, everybody that's involved in the community in, in this game. Well, let's hope you bring them. They bring themselves in at that same level next week against Chippewa Valley. You guys, um, you guys have a tough one next week. Chippewa Valley is picked to win the MAC Red, and you guys have to go to their place and play them. Yeah, they're they're a tough team, and uh, we're going to go and prepare for them, and we'll be the kids will be ready to play. Um, but there's no question that they, you know, they give you a lot of problems in their skilled positions, and so uh, we got to be able to uh, see what we can do to, you know, try to help us you know, in key situations that they run, like third down and long and things like that. And uh, so, yeah, it's going to be a tough job, but, you know, we'll have the kids prepared. They'll be ready to play. Okay, Coach, best of luck to you next week, and let's get another Eisenhower victory. All right, thank you. Eisenhower's offensive star tonight, Jack Morris. And, Jack, uh, one running touchdown, one receiving touchdown, and you threw for one. But I bet you're probably more impressed with the one that you threw and more happy about that one than any one of them. Yeah, you know, it's just getting back to the roast of being a quarterback, you know, back in my olden days, and uh, it felt good getting another touchdown pass. What did you, what did you, what was going through your mind when you saw Boo Haidar and he was going to come down with that football? I mean, I just made sure I had to get the perfect pass, and it was right to him, and he just ran right in the end zone, and it was perfect. And in the touchdown pass that you had for uh, received from uh, Max Whitwer, uh, it looked like you had to make a slight adjustment to the football. He threw me open, you know, it, safety was right there, and he threw it to the perfect spot where I can get to it, and it was a perfect throw. And how about your run? And you had a couple of runs tonight. They were pretty weavy out there. Yeah, it was nice blocks out there. You know, I got to give credit to everyone that was blocking for me out there. Is it tough to play a team like Roseville that, that you know, um, uh, even though they were 2-0, and they're in a different division, a lower division than you guys? Uh, how do you get up for a game like this? I mean, it's every game is the same. You know, it's just you know that they're going to give everything they had, and we just need to be ready for it. And speaking about being ready, next week you have Chippewa Valley. Uh, what's that going to be like? That's going to be the tough game. That's going to be for the Mech Red Championship, and the uh, whole team's ready for it. Well, best of luck to you next week. I know you want to say hello to some folks. I'd like to say hi to my family and everyone who came out to the game today. 
Darian Doherty tonight, you opened up some big holes. You and your offensive line for that Eisenhower Eagle offense. It looked like Max Whitwer and uh, Caleb Oyster had some big holes to go through. Um, tell us a little bit about your, uh, your, your performance tonight and the performance of your offensive line. Uh, tonight we stuck to the basics. We worked on uh, just keeping every footstep and every hand placement where it needed to be and uh, worked out like usual. And, and the amazing thing or the real nice thing about it is we didn't see a lot of laundry out on the field. No penalties against you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we cleaned it up. We had one last week, and uh, we drilled it hard in practice to make sure we eliminated the penalties, and uh, won't see any soon. Now, they had some pretty big guys on that defensive line. Uh, how hard were they to move? Uh, it wasn't hard at all. They stood straight up, so it was easier to get right under their pads today. Tell me a little bit about what it's like to uh, have Max and, and, and uh Oyster and Buhaydar and Jack Morris too, as skill players. Does it make it easier for you guys? It always makes it easier. You don't have to hold your blocks so long. So that's always nice to have some big uh, skill players in the backfield that can make big plays real fast. So it's always good. Tell us a little bit about the game tonight. You guys uh, uh, finally got the ball and scored. It was only 7 nothing after the first quarter. But what, did, what were you thinking after you guys scored the first touchdown? How were you feeling? We were feeling good. We knew we were on a roll and uh, just kept putting in the end zone. That's the way we do it. Tell me a little bit about next week's tough game against Chippewa Valley. How are you guys going to prepare for that one? Uh, just working every day in practice, drilling the basics like usual, and working as hard as we can. Be ready for them. Have you seen any film on Chippewa Valley? Yep, we've seen film already, and we're already starting to prepare for them. Well, I wish you good luck, and I know you want to say hello to some folks. Yep, I'd like to say hi to my mom, dad, brother, and Coach Layson for helping me get where I am today. On the defensive side of the football, there's a star, and that's Carlo uh, Lechirco. And Carlo, uh, you came up some big tackles. Looked like you, you guys early were a little bit fooled by their offense. Yeah, it was just difficult because uh, they were very spread out. You know how to spread offense. Not something we really saw. Uh, we saw that last week with Dakota. They kind of spread us out, but it was different this week. They had a lot more spread out. Um, we came off a little flat. Not as you know, when you're playing a team like Roseville, you're not as hyped up as you know, let's say Dakota or Chippewa Valley next week. So we came out a little flat. We had to fix that against you know any team we play. So that kind of like made us sluggish at first, gave him a few first downs. Tell us about running back number three, Levante Harris. He was kind of a load out there. Yeah. He was pretty quick for a big fellow. He was. He was very quick, yeah. He gave me a few pops for sure. Uh, yeah, he's a quick guy. Um, hit the hole with the you know, quarterback read option with him. It's a difficult, you know, difficult play to stop. But, I mean, we did a decent job with it, I think. But, yeah, he, he's got some real talent. It looked like you guys were starting to call some blitzes later in the, in the game. Is, was that the case? Was that a, a planned thing, or did you guys just do it on your own? Um, no, that was a planned thing. Coach Brzezinski, all of his great calls, he was calling those from the sideline. Um, we just knew we had to get pressure on the quarterback because we know that they had some you know, errors in the backfield, so we knew if we caught them on an error, we would get a sack for sure. I mean, you, you guys have been playing speed teams pretty much the whole season, um, and, and they look like they had a lot of speed. Uh, when, you, when you play a team like that and, and – What's the, what's the game plan going in? Well, the game plan going in is just playing our game. We have a lot of speed in our defense, too. That's kind of the strong point of our defense. We're not the biggest defense. Alex Decker starts tonight, middle linebacker. He might be a buck 50, if that. So, I mean, we just, we're just known for our speed, so we're ready to take on anyone in that sense. Talk a little bit about next week's uh, game against Chippewa Valley, the big game of the year now already. It's game number four. Tell us a little bit about your thoughts on that game. Yeah, that's going to be a big one. It's going to be at Chippewa Valley, I believe. And, uh, yeah, it's just going to be huge. They're a pretty physical team. They have a lot of returning players. I'm pretty sure I heard it was something like, I think it was like 10 out of their 11, like, re starting, you know, returning players. And, you know, it's just going to be a big game. And we just got to prepare for it and get, come off harder than we did today. But I think we can handle it. Well, I know you want to say hello to some folks, so I'll let you do that now. All right, got to say hello to my mom, my dad, uh, the girl, Zoe, just asked for the homecoming, of course, and uh, my cousin, Francesco. Uncle Sam, Aunt Maria, all my What's that girl? What's that girl's name? Zoe. Okay. You want to say hi to her? Oh, hello, Zoe. How are you doing? <laughs> all right. Thanks, Carl. Appreciate it. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov kids for tips and information.
There's just one place where students are students first, and athletics are played with purpose and perspective. That place is your local high school. High school sports offer more than the joy of competition. Studies show that student athletes are also likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in other areas of their lives, including academics. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. The undefeated Roseville Panthers visited Barney Swinehart to take on the undefeated Eisenhower Eagles. The Panthers were hoping to upset the top-ranked Eagles, but Eisenhower had other plans. Roseville had the ball first, and they strung together a couple first downs, and in no time they were in Eisenhower territory. Eisenhower would stop the Panthers on third and fourth down on these plays by Drake Minnie and Carlo Locherco. When the Eagles got the ball, they went right to work. Max Whitworth gets good blocking and gets 15 yards on this run. Then Caleb Oyster gets another 20 yards on this pitch to the Roseville 35. Ben Metz makes this reception and gets good yardage after the catch. Jack Morris reads his blocks perfectly and scampers into the end zone for the game's first score and Ike led 7-0. The Eagles defense picked it up on Roseville's next offensive series as Alex Decker makes this tackle for a loss. Ike's next offensive series started out with this 17-yard run by Caleb Oyster. Saad Buhaydar hauls in this pass and takes it to the Panther 23. Buhaydar's got it at the 30, 25, and down to the 23 yard line goes Saad Buhaydar. The drive moved into the second quarter where Max Whitwer ran it in for the touchdown. The extra point, however, was no good and the score was 13 to nothing Eagles. On Roseville's next drive, the Eagles attacked like pit bulls and forced the Panthers to punt. Eisenhower gets the ball and strikes quickly. Max Whitwer finds Jack Morris deep for the touchdown. The extra point was good and it was 20 to nothing Eisenhower. Touchdown Eisenhower! With Roseville deep in Eisenhower territory, Levante Harris fumbles and Kurt Wadke recovers for Eisenhower. Max Whitwer goes up top to Ben Metz Metz takes it to the Panther six. He's got it at the 30, to the 25, to the 20, to the 10, to the seven yard line goes Ben Metz. Great play action there. Brought all the, all the action to the offensive right. Metz was on the offensive left and came across the field. Then Whitwer would take it in for his second touchdown of the game. And touchdown Eisenhower. Great hesitation. 
hesitation by Whitworth there. Caleb Oyster gets the two-point conversion, and it's 28 to nothing Eisenhower. Just before the half ended, the Panthers fumbled again. Antonio Gray recovers for Eisenhower. Pivots here, makes the counter. He wants to throw, the, wants to do the option pitch here to, to Callaway. Just that, uh, that exchange over top. Max Whitwer smells blood and goes for all the marbles, but the pass goes off Ian Canelli's hands, and it's picked off by Roseville's Chris Callaway. And the half would end with the score: Eisenhower 28, Roseville nothing. In the second half, Jack Morris took over at quarterback for Eisenhower. He keeps the football and takes it to the Roseville 16. Here, reverses fields, puts his hand out, great balance, great athleticism. What an asset to this Eagle team. Then Caleb Oyster gets it down to the five. Caleb Oyster would power his way into the end zone, and Eisenhower now led it 35 to nothing. Great second effort by Oyster there. This is a kid who does not go down easy. We saw this last week versus the Cougars. Does a great job of providing a second effort there. Loves to keep his pad level low. And what a great back to have here on the goal line. Eisenhower's defense forced the Panthers to punt. The Eagles had the ball, and Jack Boris finds a Saad Buhaydar deep for an 82-yard touchdown play. The extra point was good, and the score made it 42 to nothing Eisenhower. Late in the game, Roseville drove to the Eisenhower 15, threatened the Eagles shutout, but Mike Bush and Kamal Mokled made these key tackles here. Finally on third down, Tayshawn Jones can't keep his footing as the Eagles close in on him and he goes down untouched. The Panthers attempt a field goal, but it's short, and it preserves the Eagles' shutout. Sebastian Puda wraps this one up for Eisenhower. The Eagles win it 42 to nothing over Roseville. Next up, the Chippewa Valley Big Red. Even in the hustle and noise of this modern world, we feel the pull of the forest to walk under the canopy and feel transformed. National forests are essential to life, majestic and grand. They clean our air, supply drinking water to millions, and provide homes to countless wildlife. They fuel our imaginations, inspiring us to think big, and now's the time to do just that. Fires and natural disasters devastate our forests each year. That's why we're replanting millions of new trees across the country. The Arbor Day Foundation needs your help. We've heard the call of the wild and we've answered. Scientists, foresters, volunteers, and members, together we can preserve and protect our heritage and legacy. We must act now so that the generations of today and tomorrow can continue to depend on our forests. Visit arborday.org. See how you can help. Captain, four of the 
Well, folks, we had a chance to uh, visit longtime Eisenhower coach Bob Lancey in his first game at Stony Creek High School, and uh, I want to take a look at that now. And coach, you're over at uh, Stony Creek uh, these days, and uh, you came out with an opening victory. Uh, Tell us how it's going over there at Stony Creek. I think things are in a very positive mood. Uh, I think things are moving forward. I think we're learning to throw the ball and run the ball and uh, have, have fun doing it. And it uh, showed up in a couple of nice drives today. But I think the biggest thing is that we played defense all last year and we're playing really good team defense right now. At halftime, we had to come back and uh, they were up 1-0 uh, on turnovers. And I think we won the game because it ended up 3-1 at the end. Tell us a little bit about what it's been like to basically try to build a football program at a school that's really not known for football. Uh, it's a struggle. It's very difficult. It's very time consuming. And uh, it's a lot more work than I expected for an old man. <laughs> but the players that I have are tremendous athletes, uh, tremendous competitors, and they hit. And we're going to have a great program as it keeps building. Well, we saw a couple. Uh, we got three. We, I don't know when that we have three victories. Our freshman one, our JV. Or, <laughs> we have. We don't have any losses yet. The freshman one, the JV tied, and we won. So that's a big start for Stony football right there. So tell, tell us a little bit about uh, uh, the, the difference between, uh, I guess, Oakland County football and Cone County football. Uh, both brutal. They're just brutal. I mean, the teams that we had to play week after week last year, it was incredible. Uh, I don't think there's uh, anything different. It just depends on how healthy somebody can, can come into the playoffs and how well they can play through the playoffs. And I think draws have a lot to do with it, but there's really the physical part of the game is the same. They're two of the greatest conferences in, uh, in uh, Michigan. You having fun yet? Uh, I've had a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed it. I enjoy every day at practice. I enjoy the people I'm working with, and the players really uh, give us a lot back. Well, best of luck to you next season, Bob. Thanks, Tim. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed our show. For Coach Chris Smith, I'm Tim Meyer saying we'll see you next time right here on the Eisenhower Eagle Football Review.